Need a place to store your secret stash? Then let's make some fake book secret stash boxes. These fun shaped boxes are easy and cheap to make with supplies from your local dollar store. I picked up some foam core board from Dollarama intent on making a book nook, and when that plan fell through, I decided to repurpose it for these nifty storage or gift boxes. I had designed a mock-up with cardboard, so my first thought was to build the boxes with the foam core the same way. I used the template or mock-up to get the measurements and began by cutting the spine of the book. I'll put the measurements that I used on screen in text. In order to create the bend in the spine, I marked and cut out grooves down one side of the foam board. I was careful to only cut through one side of the foam, leaving the paper on the opposite side intact. I then cut the end boards and decided the best way to attach the spine to the end boards was with glue. The strongest I have, wood glue. Don't get me wrong, this did work, but my smooth brain soon realized I could cut a length of the foam cord the width of the end boards times two plus the spine width and skip the gluing step altogether. This makes the spine sturdier and saved me a heck of a lot of time. When I had one full sheet for the cover, I carefully measured the width of the spine, which should be approximately two times the depth of the box you want to make. Then I marked even sections for the grooves and cut them using a metal ruler as a guide. You can easily pry the foam core open the rest of the way and fold it at each groove to ensure it bends completely. The next step was to cut the pieces for the box frame. I just measured the size of one of the cover boards and made the box one quarter inch smaller from the top and bottom and about a half inch less wide. I beveled the edges of the box pieces. This worked best with a sharp knife and cutting down from the edge on a 45 degree angle. Just remember to bevel the edges so they are on the same side. I taped the back side of these pieces together and glued them with wood glue then tape them together at the end, and then use more painter's tape as clamps. Now for the fun part, decorating the books. After a failed attempt to cover one of the book boxes with some vinyl I had lying around, I decided the best way for me to decorate the boxes was to paint the spines and the internal box frame inserts, and then decorate the covers with some of my scrapbooking paper. On a side note, if you do mess up, you can reuse the cover as a template to quickly make another one the same size. I decided to match the paint color of the spines to the paper I was using, so I dug into my scrapbooking stash and found designs I liked for each book box. Once that very difficult decision was made, because I had too many choices, I mixed up some acrylic paint to coordinate with the papers I chose. Don't feel as though you need fancy scrapbooking paper for this, you could use any kind of paper from cardstock to wrapping paper or fabric if you want. I painted the spines of the books on the inside and outside then painted the box insert the same color. Get creative here, use multiple colors if you like. This is your craft. I applied two to three coats of the paint and sped up the drying time with my heat gun between coats. Take your time and get into all the grooves of the spine too. When I finished the first book, I didn't like the feel of the acrylic paint, so I decided to coat it with a matte Mod Podge. This of course created a separate challenge because it got into all the grooves of the spine and being a glue I had to spend extra time ensuring it didn't stick together. While I did like the result, I didn't feel the extra time was worth the headache and did not repeat this step for the other two I made. I cut the paper down to the size of the covers and left enough to wrap around to the inside of the cover. Unfortunately, my smooth brain didn't account for the thickness of the boards when I did the first book box, and I had to do some extra strategic covering to achieve the look I wanted. I decided I wanted the inside cover paper to only be visible inside the box, so I ensured I had enough of the outside cover paper to wrap far enough in on the inside of the cover. You'll need around one and a half inches more paper than the width and length of the cover. Don't ever be discouraged when making something for the first time. Practice makes improvement, and you will always learn and improve your technique and skills the more you make something. I then glued down the edges and used a bone folder to help press the paper down. I mainly used a glue stick, but you could use a PVA glue as well. After messing up the first box I made, I used the box insert for the next couple to cut the inside cover paper to only be visible inside the box insert, then glued those papers down as well. I pulled out a fancy new glue gun I got and applied a thin amount around the bottom edge of the box, and then quickly pressed the frame down onto the cover. 
The very last step is optional, but I decided I wanted the boxes to stay closed somehow. Initially, I grabbed an old strip magnet off my fridge and cut a couple of small pieces off. But then Mr. Pamarkey showed me the extra strong tiny magnets he had purchased from Michael's, and they were perfect. I cut out a small groove for the magnet in the box's frame at the halfway point and glued in a magnet with a dab of hot glue. I then glued down a tiny flat washer on the inside of the front cover. I was so happy with how these secret stash boxes, or dare I say, book-shaped gift boxes turned out. Honestly, I wasn't sure how this craft was going to go and I was pleasantly surprised at how easy they were once I figured out how they'd come together. If you found this video useful or entertaining, bop that like button and consider subscribing for more Total Pamarchy. Until next time, happy holidays! <laughs>